I've entitled this message. I preached a portion of this message years ago, about five or six years ago. And the Lord brought it back to my attention with some other things he gave me to bring for us tonight, for me and for you. Uh, and I've entitled it The Pit. The Pit. I'm going to be starting in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. And you're very familiar passage. A lot of you have heard of Daniel the lion's den in times past, even as children. But I want to bring it to you the way the Lord has brought it to me here this way. And once again, here we have the story of Daniel. Now, we know that Daniel loved the Lord. He was faithful to the Lord. Daniel loved the Lord. But he had some people that didn't like him at all. Because he was blessed of God and everything he touched was blessed of the Lord, King Darius gave him favor. And he gave him favor in everything he did. His hand, God's hand was upon Daniel and everything. So here come the trash talkers. The trash talkers begin to come against him to look for something to come against Daniel to bring to the king. To pull Daniel, in reality, from God's presence. To pull him in, 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 in what's obvious, the blessing of God upon his hand. So I want to start here with Daniel chapter 6. And I'm going to first start with verses 4 and 5. This is verse number 4. At this, the administrators and the satraps, satraps are a governor. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs. In other words, they began to look at the things he was doing that the king had him do. In other words, at his job, those things that he was doing and he was involved in publicly. Those things that he was involved with publicly. Let me read on in verse 4. But they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Now, trustworthy being, this is the, when I was studying this today and I was saying trustworthy, I know there's a lot of aspects of trustworthy. They can trust you with money, the finances. If you're in charge of grain and wheat or barley or you're in charge of materials and parts, you're not going to steal them or try to sell them. You're trustworthy. But I'm telling you, that's not what came to my mind hard. I don't know if my mind's sideways or what, but when, it, when, when I read trustworthy, I said, Lord, show me something. And the Lord said, who are you talking to? He said, men. He said, so tell them this. <laughs> in other words, if your brother in the Lord is cool with living his beautiful, fine wife with you, for the day, just because you're going to be out of town and he wants to leave her with you to help her, to take her, do or maybe change her tire because she needs a water pump, whatever. Can this man trust you with his wife? That's the first thing that came to my mind. I wasn't thinking about money. Can anybody trust you with his wife? The Lord, you're dealing with men. Tell them that. And it says no corruption was found in him. In other words, he wasn't trying to sell product and make profit for his own on the side that way. He wasn't trying to steal. He was not corrupt. And he was not negligent. Negligent being they trusted him with everything. They put him in charge and he didn't burn anybody. He took care of it. He took care of it well. And he was a man of his word. So it's certain, those are the jobs that he had working with the government. So they looked for those areas once again. Uh, charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they found none. So it says that they looked to catch him in doing those things that once again he was in charge with in the government affairs, and they couldn't find anything. Once again, he wasn't corrupt. He wasn't negligent that way. So in their search, in reality, they did find something. But they found the scripture says that he was trustworthy. So after investigating, talking to everybody, going through everything he did with the government, they found that he was a trustworthy man. But they still wanted to get him. They wanted to come against him. Isn't that like that when God begins to do something mighty? You know you're blessed of God. The enemy says, watch, I'm going to mess him up. I'm going to try to mess him up. You see, when the, when the trash talkers, the people, sometimes family member in reality in general, look to come against the man of God, they don't look in reality to see what you're doing in church or how many times you attend church 
or if you're giving in the offering or not, or what level of involvement you are in ministry within the body of Christ. They don't look to what you're doing there because everyone knows how to act right amongst the brethren. Everybody knows how to act right in church. Everybody does their best in church. Control their tongue a little bit more in church. Act right, especially if their wife and their kids are sitting there. Because everyone tries to act right in church. But they were began to look. They wanted to look what, in reality, is perfect. They wanted to look what Daniel was liking on social media. They wanted to see what Daniel was looking at when he picked up his, his computer. They wanted to know what he was doing in reality, what he was liking, what images he was liking that way. They wanted to know what Daniel was doing in his private time. It said they looked in all the government affairs, all his, his, his daily business, his work, but they couldn't find nothing. They, so in reality, they wanted, they wanted to know what Daniel's family member says. If Daniel would have, he did, but if Daniel would have had a wife, they would have been searching out wife. Tell me how. How's, how's your husband acting at home? Yeah. Excuse me, do you ever go in his garage and see what he has in the garage? You know, that box that he has in the closet. Do you ever go in there and see what's in that box? Talk to the kids. I've said that many times. You talk to your teenagers, the teenagers will tell the truth, thinking they're doing a good thing. But the teenagers drop a big old silver dollar on you, boy. <laughs> and we think, oh, they don't know nothing. Teenagers, that they live in your house? They know. You can be in the garage. You're going to take a quick drink some Jack Daniels. An hour later, the kids will be in the kitchen saying, What's that smell, mama? Kids don't know. Don't think you're going to smoke weed outside down the road in the car and open all the windows and then come back in the car and think nobody's going to know nothing. The kids will tell you, I know what, what that is. I know what brand that is, too. <laughs> so they wanted to know what Daniel was doing in his private time. Verse number five. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the laws of his God. So what they're saying right here with that scripture text, they're saying, we know that Daniel, in reality, he is faithful to his God. And we know that he is consistent and faithful in everything he does. And we know because of that consistency, his integrity, and his faithfulness, we know for sure exactly that Daniel pays, prays three times a day. And we can tell you exactly what time he's going to be praying. And we can tell you exactly where he's going to be praying. Because we know who he is. As a man of God, and we know the Lord's hand is upon him. So they're saying, so that that's the case, we will use his faithfulness in his walk with God against him. Because we asked his family, we asked everybody, yeah, we can't find nothing. We asked everybody where he works, we couldn't find nothing. We asked his co-workers, they said nothing, he's a man of God. We asked his neighbors, we asked everybody. Everyone said he was trustworthy, he was faithful, and he was not corrupt. So once again, now verses 6 through 8, I'm paraphrasing the trash talkers, convinced the king to sign a decree. So they went all brown nosed the king, can I talk to you for a minute? They convinced the king that for 30 days, no one but no one in that kingdom is to pray, kneel down, and worship anybody except to King Darius. So the king was like, that's cool right there. So he said, let it be written that no one can worship any other God or bow down and pray to any other God or man. It says, unless it's you, king. And let it be known that if they are caught praying to any other God or any other man kneeling down that way other than to you, King Darius, that let it be put the decree that they will be thrown into the lion's den. Chapter 6, verse 9. So King Darius put the decree in writing. 
So now it's law and no one can pray to anybody else or anything for 30 days unless you're praying to the king. And these trash talkers knew. They knew that Daniel was faithful in his prayers to his God. Verse number 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. So Daniel's commitment was not swayed by threats. His commitment was not swayed by somebody saying there's a, there's a law now or somebody trying to come against you with fear. He knew who he is in, 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 in his walk with, with the Father. His walk and his personal relationship with, with, with the Lord was not determined on his environment. So verse 11. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Just think about that for a minute. You're going to be throwing the lions in if you get caught. He goes to the exact same place, exact same time, exact same position, raising his hands and begin to pray to the Lord out loud. And these men, they knew they stood right there. They seen him. They seen him do it. So they, they knew that Daniel was, was, was continuing to pray. So verse number 12, verse number 12. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. They said, did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or man except to you, O king, will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the, the decree stands in accordance with the laws of the Medes and the per Persians, which cannot be repealed. So verses 13 to 15, the snitches, they, they snitch Daniel out. They snitch Daniel out that way. They, they just snitch him out. And they, they remind the king of his decree. So verse 16. So the king gave the order. And they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den, lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually. So the king knew who he was in, with, with the Lord. He knew his relationship. It says, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. See, King wasn't being sarcastic. He was not being sarcastic. He loved Daniel, and he knew God's hand was upon him. And in reality, he wanted Daniel's freedom, but the decree had been in writing already. It was a law. So verse 17, almost done. Stay with me. So a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. With that, in reality, Daniel was abandoned and no one there had the authority and ability to get Daniel out of that pit, out of that mess. So paint the picture just for a moment because we always remember that picture as, oh, a nice story as a kid. Oh, yeah, but that Daniel, they just show some lines in the distance, hair with braids and stuff. So I don't think, no, they didn't have running water in their toilets in there and I don't think they had a light switch to put. It's too dark to turn the light. So paint the picture of the smell and the nastiness of this thing. And Daniel is thrown in there, into this place. He's abandoned there. Now he's in the lion's den. God did not keep him from being sentenced to the pit. God did not change the scary image is the way the lions look to make them look pretty or nicer. God did not keep him from that. God didn't change that for a moment. He didn't make the lions smaller. He didn't make them into cubs or kittens. God didn't even change the environment of the den. But the faithful, trustworthy, honest, powerful, Man of God still had to go into the lion's den. Not because he did something wrong, but because he was doing something right. He was doing something right. All our lives, once again, we see this cute little lion with his story. And, and, 
And sometimes even in the back of our mind, we, what would we do if we were in there? And so what do you think Daniel might have been going through? Because it's like Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego. They were put in the fiery furnace. But I know that God used them like he did Daniel many, in, many times before. And they know that God could have taken them out of that circumstance. But you would think, let's just say Daniel getting put in the lion's den. You would think before he goes in the lion's den, he might be thinking, all these years I've been blessed of God and everything I've touched. God has he's taken care of me, everything. God's not going to let me go in that lion's den. He's not going to do that. That's the first thing I better, I would have been saying, God, you better do something right now. <laughs> the king's already here. I mean, if I'd have been at home praying, they, they would have come and picked me up. Now, when you look at the story and you read it, you say, oh, I'd be just like Daniel. I would say, yeah, come on, take me. Because you, you read the end of the book. You know what happens. You know the Lord rescues him. But if you did not know the end of the book, you had not read the story, nobody told you nothing, and they're coming to get you. Been, the law has been decreed, and they're coming to get you. I guarantee you, I love Jesus, but I got my 12-gauge. <laughs> I'm just telling you straight, Pastor Reed, you, I'm just telling you. I'd have said, you're going to get, but I'm going to go through all seven of these rounds first. <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of believe that if they would have already just grabbed me and like tied me up and I was already going to the pit, I, I, I'd have, I'm, I'm not a punk, but I'd be biting these latos. <laughs> I'd have been biting these dudes. I'd have been swinging and I've been, I'm a, I ain't going in there. I love God, but I if you're going to throw me in there, two of you are going in there with me, boy. You're going in there. I ain't, I ain't going to be like, all right, throw me in there, brother. Somebody's going in the lion's den with me. I ain't going by myself. So I think I'd be kicking and bucking and fighting. and. <laughs> so we, we, we know the story. We'd all, oh, yeah, praise God. I'd have been doing real good. You wouldn't have been doing good, brother. <laughs> You know, some of you don't even like dogs. <laughs> Think you're going to be okay with a lion. <laughs> you see, when you see the hand of God in your life, in our lives, and we know that we're blessed of the Lord in a mighty way because we see the evidence of God's hand on our life like Daniel did. So when you see the evidence of God on you, your wife, your children, or your, your family member, God's blessing you with work and money, and he's blessing you with it. He's blessing those things. You see the evidence of that. The evidence in reality makes it harder to understand and believe and accept the idea that why would the Lord allow me to go through that mess as a man of God? I've been faithful to the Lord in everything. Even the government has come against me and they found nothing. Why do I got to prove to who for me to be put in this lion's den? Why do I got to get this disease? Why do I got to lose my job? Why am, I, why am I going through this mess when I'm faithful as a man of God? He could have said, everybody has checked my background. I'm clean. I ain't a felon. Nobody said nothing because half of you and your felons, that's why. When I said felons, I'm like, don't, don't act like you in a felon. Somebody's got a felony last month. <laughs> so why would I go through these storms and these attacks that I, that I go through? Why as a man of God? The evidence is that I'm blessed of the Lord. And you can say yourself, I, I, I'm trustworthy. I, I've been faithful. Oh, my God. I'm not corrupt. Genesis 5.20 says when, they, when, when, when Joseph's brothers grabbed a hold of him and they wanted to kill him, but instead they, slowed, they, they sold him into slavery. And it says that his, his, his whole life was blessed in every way God's hand was upon him, just like it was on Daniel that way. So verse 20 says, it says, it won't be in your screen. It says, 
you intended to, this is what Joseph told his brothers after their dad died and they had to come back to talk to, to, to their brother. And now he's in charge of a lot, in charge of all the grains and food and all that. Verse 20 says, Joseph said to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And Joseph understood something. Same thing with Daniel. Now we're going back to Daniel chapter 6, verse 18. Then the king returned to his place and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him. And he could not sleep. Verse 19, at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually. So right there, he's admitting that Daniel serves the Lord continually. Once again, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Verse 21, Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent an angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. Now, before I read the second half of that, of verse 22, when he says, my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. Well, we say, there it is, praise God. But I, no, don't, no, no disrespect, but I, I would say it's not good enough for me. Let me tell you why. You see how much damage lions cause with their claws? Scripture didn't say they, they, they clipped his claws. <laughs> didn't say that. He says, when I, uh, he says, the angel of God shut the mouths of the lion. But if you shut the mouth of the lion, the lion is furious. The lion is still mad. The lion is still crazy. He's still angry. He would be, he'd be coming at you. But the scripture says, he shut the mouth of the lion. Second half of 22. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Innocent of what? He was trustworthy. He was not corrupt. Nor was he negligent. God found Daniel trustworthy, once again, of those things that he was given to do within the work, in reality, in the world, in public, at the gym, wherever, at the market, wherever you're at. It says God gave him, and he was trustworthy over there. In the public places. And it says, nor have I, second half of verse um, 22. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. Watch this. Melanis man. You see, many times we are found innocent and trustworthy and not corrupt within the four walls of the church. We're found trustworthy within the church that way. But then as soon as you leave campus and you get in your car, I need you to watch this little six-minute cartoon video right here. Watch this. So get ready to turn the lights off. Watch this video right here. And I want to, hold on, don't play it yet. And make sure the audio is there. If no audio is there, start it over again. And I want you to, I was going to play only half of it, but I said, no, I'll do the whole thing because toward the very end, you'll see something that he does that is relevant to what we're saying here. So it's a cartoon because many times, once again, we're cool and we're found not corrupt in the church. But as soon as we leave campus and we get in the car, this is what we do sometimes. Play the video. You see, many times the car to us is like a, no one knows zone. See, once we get in the car, 
that car will take you places and show you some things that you don't necessarily see in your house sometimes. And especially when uh, you, in all reality, I've said before, you put on a specific type of music or a song that takes you back. <laughs> because when this flesh and his mind begins to feel good, even with music and you're in your car, even the way you sit in your car changes. You'll be too tin in your steering wheel. And when that old ear, the bad song comes on, now you're like. <laughs> and your car allows you to see things that you don't see too often. And many times the devil has a conversation with us when we're in our cars alone. How many of you would, like Patrick Cindy says, go shame the devil and admit you had a form, even for the small piece, of road rage this week? There you go. See, amen. Amen. That's good. Not that you had road rage, but it's good you admit that's good. The rest of you need to deal with your lion. That's what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, you got to deal with that lion demon. You see, once again, in, within the confines of the four walls, it's real easy to serve the Lord. It's real easy to look good amongst the brethren. And the enemy looks and says, I find nothing, but what are these guys doing out in public? What are they doing out in private? Are we found trustworthy? Daniel was found non corrupt, he was trustworthy, he was honest. The king loved him. He goes back to the pit. He tells him, I was found innocent that way. The angel of the Lord closed the mouth of the lion. But watch verse 23. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, watch this. The men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. We talked about that last week. The family pays for the, 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 the sins of the men. Watch this. Here it is, man. Watch this. And before, in other words, they threw the bodies in of the accusers and the wives, and the children. But look what it says about the, the bodies that were being thrown in there. And before they reached the floor of the den, once again, and before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. So when I hear that, it tells me this place that they had put Daniel in was a pit. And when they threw the families, the, the wives and the children into this pit, it says that the lions jumped up and met them probably halfway up to maul them and rip them apart and to snap their bones before they hit the ground. So what I'm saying is if, if, if God not only closed the mouth of the lion, the evidence of that scripture there that says that before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed their bones. That evidence right there tells me that the Lord not only closed the mouth of the lion, but he calmed the heart and the mind of a mad animal. Because look at how they were with the accusers and their family. But with Daniel, they were calm. If the Lord can do that for a mad animal, imagine what he's willing to do for you and I. Because a lot of us have been through a lot of mess, and we've been through a lot of hurt, we've been through a lot of damage. And we have a difficult time even when we're in our car, like I said, to go different places. We think crazy, we want to do crazy stuff. We want to submit to the flesh instead of the things of God. But the Lord says in Romans 12, 2, he says that, he will, have, he, will, he will begin a process of the renewing of the mind within us. 
In other words, that we will no longer think like this. We will no longer walk like that and talk like that because we are no longer that way because our minds and our hearts are now changed. If our hearts and our minds aren't changed to the power of the Holy Ghost of Jesus Christ, we're going to be the same way. We'll still be mad and crazy and acting crazy in our cars and our home. We will just act right in church. But in private, you'll still be mad all day. You'll be looking at pornography. You'll be participating in ugly, nasty things. No problem in giving it to the flesh instead of living holy before the Father. But in church, I'm found innocent. Amongst the brethren, I'm trustworthy. Amongst the body, I'm found with no corruption. I leave campus and I get in my car. This flesh says, it's you and me again. The flesh says, it's you and me again. You see, the Lord's about to do something in a mighty way. And the enemy is saying, I'm not having it. I've searched you out. I found nothing. I'm searching you out and I find nothing. So I'm going to come against who you are in the Father. I'm going to come against who you are in your relationship with the Father. The enemy says, if I can just get you to step out for a moment, even just for a second, out of the presence of your God whom you continually serve, if I can get you To just worship the money that I've been blessing you with for a minute. If I can get you to put your wife first before me. If I can get you to put your children before me. All I need you to step away from God's presence for a minute. Just a little bit over here. Then over here I'll show you something else. I find Nothing against them, so I'm going to come against them in the relationship with their Lord. Verse 25. Then King Darius wrote to all the people, nations, and men of every language without, throughout the land, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. It says, for he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lion. The king said that, and he's the one to throw him in there. The same way he made a decree against Daniel, now it's a decree that everybody is going to worship the God of Daniel. What if Daniel says, uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't doing that. I ain't going to that pit? Then God would have not been glorified. You see, the storms that we go through, the stuff, the mess that, that, that we, that as men of God, you cannot base the blessings of God in your life by all the good stuff that happens. You cannot use that bar. You cannot use it as a bar. Because if you use the good stuff that happens to you as you're blessed of God, if you use the evidence of, oh, I got money, a good house, my car's running. Matter of fact, I'm getting, I got three cars. And they, under that. If you look at those as the blessings of the hand of God, when those things are gone, you're going to say, God has abandoned me. Because that's the bar we have set. We have set stuff as the bar, as our intimacy, as the evidence of the proof of who we are in Christ. So if you do not kick and buck when something small goes wrong, That's just the Lord says, I'm showing you something right now. And I'd rather learn, I'd rather take hits when they're small like that than taking a huge hit and get put in the den, in the pit. So when you're going through some of the smallest, minute things, I'm going to tell you out of all love and all respect, don't be a punk. 
and don't be a punk and not want to go to church. Don't be a punk and say, well, you know, my whole family ain't going to go to church no more because God took my job away. Don't be a punk and say, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read the Bible. Don't be a punk and say, you know, what, I'm not going to do this because you know what? God, come in God didn't do that. You did. I did. God says, you will never, he'll never, never leave you nor forsake you. We walk away from the presence of God. We move to the side for a little bit. And the enemy says, I can get him right here. I couldn't get him right here. I checked everything. I couldn't get him. I searched. I am innocent. But as soon as you got in your car and stepped over there, when you know you shouldn't have been at that apartment, that hotel, God says, I, I, the enemy says, I got him. I got him. And you will not be victorious in your trials. And you will see an endless barrage, barrage, barrage of, of attacks like you've never seen before. And you will fail in every one of them. Unless we understand who we are in Christ. And that our environment does not dictate your walk with Christ. Because if the enemy knows, I'll close with this. If the enemy knows, he can dictate your walk in Christ by you abandoning God or abandoning your ministry or whatever God's called you to do because of the stuff you're going through. Then the enemy will keep you in hardship all the time because he knows every time he comes against you hard, you walk away from God. So you will live in hardship all the time. But if you begin to proclaim God and win souls through your most difficult time, the devil says, I ain't messing with that dude anymore because every time I come against him or his family, 10 people get saved. I'm not doing that no more. You see? Don't run. You didn't run, you didn't run from the people back in the days. You weren't a punk in the world. Don't be a punk with Jesus. Amen. We need to stand up and say, Heavenly Father, I'm going to do what you call me to do regardless of what anybody says. I don't care what man says. I'm going to speak what you call me to speak. And I'm going to be silent when you call me to be silent. I'm going to do what you call me to do. It's time that we step, as, as, step up as people of God. That when the enemy comes against us, we will be found innocent in the eyes of God. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.